right, so we were on the inside when my phone died on us. Oh, cat. She's knocking stuff down over in the corner. Um, so again, parallel lines, parallel lines, parallel lines. Then I like to pick the leg up and make everything match. So I will come from the back, kind of shake it out a little bit, and then take off anything where those four sides we made meet. Same with the armpit. And take that stuff off that hangs back behind the armpit. Don't need that there. It just gets matted and hangs around when they're moving and breaks up the line. So you can get rid of that. So now, then I will comb everything down just to make sure nothing else sticks out. Comb it down, clean it up a little bit. Um, you can see where he's missing hair. It's not ideal, but it is what it is. So I'll do the other front one. Same way, comb everything down. I use straight shears on the foot itself. Take everything off straight across that pad. Take off what's going to stick out on the ground. Put the foot down. Pick up the other one because he's an Airedale. <laughs> Are you an Airedale? Can't help it, can you? And then again, right up to this, right up to the nails in the front. It's okay to expose some of the nail. You want a tight foot. You're not going to get that tight line from this toenail to this chest if you don't take this short. Some dogs need more off of there than others. Some dogs you have to expose more toenail than others and then get those nails shorter. On a pet, you just do the best you can. Stand. Good boy. And comb it down again, scissor it up again. Stand. Again, I'll comb it up and out. You can see how much hair he's missing all through here. It's all broken and, and gone. But there's way too much right here because you want this line to go straight from here to the toe. So by taking all this off, it's going to make it look like he's missing a lot less hair stop, than he really is by just taking that off, cleaning that up a little. Again, comb it up and out. I don't just comb up and scissor. I comb up and out on an Airedale. It's not a poodle, and the hair is going to fall differently. So you want to comb it up and out. Same with the back of the leg. Cooperate. Comb it up and then out. Stop. Stop. Just relax. Tight at the elbow. Good. Make that a straight line. Then I'll comb it up and out from the side, the inside and the outside. And you want this straight line, stop, from here to the outside of the foot. So all this needs to come off. Again, up and out. It doesn't need to be a perfectly scissored and clean leg. It's a natural look, so you don't want it to necessarily be... You want it to look clean and tidy, but it doesn't have to be like a poodle would be scissored. It shouldn't look like glass. It should look natural which is why I like these chunkers. Thinning shears work as well, but they're, it's much more tedious because they're generally not as long. On the inside of the foot, same thing. 
This is around the inside of the foot. Comb up and then out. And you can visualize the line from here up so you can see what needs to come off. Stay. Stay. Then I pick the leg up and I'll comb it all up and out again here. Give it a little bit of a shake and bring all of that stuff together. Those four corners, you don't want it square, you want it to be round. So you have to kind of round that stuff off. And I'll comb it all down. And make sure nothing's crazy sticking out. From every angle, all four sides, you gotta kinda make sure you got everything. Back foot, same concept on the foot, comb it all down. My scissors straight across the back pad. Take off everything here that's sticking out of the foot. Put the foot down. Scissors are around the foot. Good boy. You usually do not need to expose much toenail, if any, on the back feet. But you still want it to be a nice tight foot. A little bit of toenail showing is okay. Then I start combing up and out. We blended most of this off of the hip, so I'm sorry. So there's not a whole lot to do here except just blend a little bit more. You just want that to all blend in. So it's just a quick blending. Excuse me. <laughs> Down here, you want to just follow that parallel line. So anything that's sticking out on the side of the you want to take off. Same with the inside. Comb it all up and out. You want to go from the thickest part of the thigh and take off whatever sticks out past the thickest part of the thigh because you want that line to go from the thickest part of the thigh here straight to this part of the foot down here. So everything in the middle that's sticking out needs to come off. When it comes to the front of the leg, stand, good boy. You'll comb it up. You wanna give, you want some tuck up hair there because you want this to be like this. And he's pretty sparse there, but he has it. Because you, you wanna bring your eye to the center of the dog and part the tuck up's job is to help bring your eye to the center of the dog. If you cut all that off back here, he's gonna look really long and he's gonna cut in half right here. So. We want this hair there. There's not much of it there, it's pretty thin, but we want it there. So I'm just gonna clean it up and give it the angle that I want, and I'm gonna follow into the underline and clean that up as well with my scissors just to finish the, the finished underline off. Coming back to the back leg, you want him to have a knee where the leg bends. The opposite of where the leg bends is the knee. So you want him to have that, and you can see from his just previous grooms and stuff, it's, you know, the knee is there. I'm not going to take any length off of this because he doesn't have anything. I am, however, going to come in a little bit down here and take some of this stuff off just to try to give him a little bit more rear angulation. Same with the hock. I'm just going to try to make his hocks look a little lower. He 
He doesn't look like he has much rear angle because he's missing hock hair. The more hock hair, the, more, the lower I can make his hock look. If he had all this hair here, then I could make his hock look, which his hock is actually right up here. I could make his hock look like it starts down here, which would be a, a more let down hock. But he, just, he doesn't have that hair to do that with. I'm gonna trim up the tip of his tail a little bit that we just couldn't get with the clippers. Just cleaning that up, make sure there's nothing sticking out back here. Moving on to the other back leg, same thing. Comb it all down. Scissors straight across. Take off everything that's hanging below the pad. Put the foot down, comb it down. Around the foot, right up to those toenails. From this angle, I can see a little bit of this on that foot that I missed. That's why it helps to work around the dog, so then you can check your work on the other side. So you get a nice tight foot. And then I'm going to do the same as I did on that side. I'm going to blend this stuff in a little bit more. I'm not going to lift it so much. I don't want to really lift it all up. I just kind of want to comb it around and out and just blend off. You start lifting it up, you're going to not have any hair left to blend with because you're going to take it all off. So I'm just blending that in. You want that to be flat there. Same with down here. You want to follow that line. So anything that sticks out past that needs to come off. The inside, same thing. Thickest part of the thigh here. Everything comes off on the inside past that. Stay, Wilson. Short everything off the back of the back leg, which we did with the seven blade. And again, you want to try to drop that hock down some. He's got a pretty tall hock. He's a pet, so it's not a huge deal, but it is something that owners can notice that their dog looks better. They don't necessarily know why but they can tell something looks different than when they go elsewhere to other places that may not make those small little changes in corrective grooming. Same thing here with, the, with this, we want this to fill in. He's got it there, it's just thin and not quite as long as it could be. So I'm just gonna take that off. And again, I'm just gonna follow my angle on the underline and snip that stuff off. And again, there's not really much hair on the front. I'm just getting some of the hair on the inside of his leg that I couldn't see very well from behind. When you comb this up, you can see it more from up underneath. Same with this side. You comb it up and you can see up underneath of there. That's some of the hair that when they sit down just sticks out all crazy and there's no reason for it to be there. It just gets matted. Okay, now we'll do the head. All right, so the head, I'm using my seven blade. I'm not going to try to do much corrective grooming um, on his head because he's a pet and um, th there's really no need. So it's all going to be minor you know, minor things that an owner's not necessarily going to notice. I will try to make him look the best that he can, but I'm not going to get all crazy with uh, trying to do uh, any fixing on his head. And so I'm using the seven blade. I'm going to start behind where I want his eyebrows to be because I want to be able to blend those in. So I'm going to start back here and I'm going to take this all off. I'm going to stop just where I've started the clipper work on his body. I'm going to thinning shear that in. Now I'm going to come down the side of his cheek. I'm going to leave myself enough. I'm going to leave myself enough room here to blend. 
So the line is actually closer to the corner from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth, but I'm going to not I'm going to leave this so that I can do that with thinning shears. If you take your seven blade and you whack off everything from this corner to this corner, you're going to have nothing to blend and your dog's face is not going to look very good, especially if he's cheeky or anything like that. You're going to have a really hard time fixing that. So I'm leaving myself room to blend. So I'm going to take off everything underneath of the ear here. And then I'm going to come up underneath of here and I'm going to start just pat just in this fold here on the, only the bottom jaw. I'm going to lift all of this stuff because I, I don't want to take any of that off, but all of this needs to come off just on the underside. Don't take all of this stuff off. You're going to need that for your face, just the underside. Same on the other side. Come down. Don't get too close to the eye. You want to leave yourself some blending room. Take all that off. Lift it. Usually it'll go in reverse just to clean out that fold. So when you're done with your seven, that's basically what your head, what you, the pattern you want to start with. You don't want to get all crazy with your seven blade taking all this off and then realizing that you, you have no hair to work with. I like to rake the face out. The more wire hair you keep in the face, the easier your face is going to be to get the, the correct shape that you want. The softer and curlier and more poodle-like this hair gets, the harder it is to create the shape on the head that you want. So even on a pet, I will pluck some of the face. It's easier, makes it so much quicker to do a, the correct head when you pull some out. You can see his hair is still coming in pretty decent. Um, because of the raking and the pulling, genetically he's got nice hair too. Um, but over time, that will that will fall apart. Now the beer on my stuff. I'm gonna thinning shear the back of the head here to blend this stuff in. Good boy, Wilson. Should be a pretty quick blend. Same with behind the ear. And then you can see where we started the ear when we did the ears with a 10. You can see that line that we started. It's right here. And you can see once we run the, ten, the thinners over it once, there's really nothing left to do with it. You can see on this side, the 10 started right here. So all I'm going to do is just thinning shear this stuff a little bit. And it fills that right in. I'm going to get those cowlicks from earlier. Just blend them in a little bit between the seven and that four attachment we used on his body. I'm going to take all of this stuff off underneath of the ear. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Stay, stay. And you can see there's not a whole lot to blend. It's just little bits. I'm going to scissor off the edges of the ear. If you're not experienced at doing this, go slow. You 
can cut them. I don't like to use thinning shears on the ear edge. I like a nice crisp ear edge. Okay. I'm going to get out one of my stripping knives. This is an old classic, can't find them anymore. Um, Franklin makes what's supposed to be the same thing. I don't really think they are. I would say the great.